The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Well, good day. I'm Elena Rusk. So let's talk about our other headlines because it was a deadly weekend on Kern County roads. A young man killed and two women injured Saturday in an apparent DUI rollover crash on the grapevine. It happened just after 7 p.m. Saturday when officers with the California Highway Patrol in the Fort Tejon area arrived at the crash and said they found a passenger dead at the scene and others hurt. The man killed has been identified as 20 year old Tony Ray Charles III of Bakersfield. The injured passenger identified as 18 year old Bakersfield resident Erica Hayden. Officers say the driver, 18 year old Delia Johnson of Bakersfield, was also hurt and appeared to be under the influence of alcohol. She was taken to Kern Medical for treatment and arrested for felony DUI, but she hasn't yet been booked into jail. Investigators say none of them were wearing their seatbelts. And a man riding his bike hit and killed by a car in Wasco last night. The Kern County coroner identified that victim as 67 year old Salvador Carubias, saying he was struck by a truck at the intersection of Poplar and Filburn about 8.20 p.m. He was declared dead at the scene. Well, Kern County continues to suffer the consequences of fentanyl, the synthetic opioid that's 50 times more potent than heroin. The latest numbers from the Kern County Coroner's Office show the county is on track for yet another record setting number of deaths from this illicit drug. As we've reported many times, fentanyl is turning up in virtually all street drugs from knockoff painkillers like phony Oxycontin to cocaine, Xanax, and even cannabis. Through Sunday, 180 Kern County residents have died this year from overdoses of fentanyl or related synthetic opioids. That puts us on track for 272 fentanyl deaths this year, a 17% increase from last year. And it's also more than double the 125 people who died in 2020, a number here at 17 that we found to be so alarming, we produced an Emmy-winning special report that you can still see on KGET.com called Fentanyl, the Counterfeit Killer. There on our site, you will also find tips on how to spot and treat suspected fentanyl overdoses and save someone in the midst of a possible overdose with the OD reversal drug Narcan. Well, in other news, negotiations moving forward on an ambitious plan to provide greater access to low cost broadband internet service for underserved communities in the greater Bakersfield area. The County of Kern and City of Bakersfield are in talks with Sci-Fi Networks to install the fiber optic infrastructure to make it happen open access. Uh, that's something that is uh, gravely needed these days uh, across the country and in all of our communities because it creates competition. This is what the technology Now under this proposal, like. Sci-Fi Networks would build a fiber optic network using micro trenching technology at no cost to the county or city. That's a $400 million investment. The focus will be on lower income communities shown in pink on this map, areas like Oildale, Lamont, East Bakersfield and Fuller Acres. Sci-Fi will offer broadband internet subscriptions to residents at competitive prices, they say. Residents also have the option of staying with their current internet service provider. But Sci-Fi says with current federal and state subsidies, the monthly cost for internet service could be as low as $30 a month. Uh, this, you know, Oildale or the city of Lamont is going to get the same kind of network infrastructure and connectivity that, that you would get in, in maybe um, Seven Oaks or a or more affluent area. So it's, uh, there's an equity that, that uh, this brings to addressing the digital divide throughout all of Metro Bakersfield. Now the county's gym service going on to say that contract with Sci-Fi Network should be ready for board consideration by mid-September. All right, well now in some fun news around town, the Housing and Opportunity Foundation set a goal to open a free library for local low income public housing sites, but they lacked the funding to get the project off the ground. As of today, that dream becoming a reality. They say it's all thanks to a local student, Moko Anan, a senior at Stockdale High School, who back in May accepted the challenge of trying to raise the funds for the free library project, bringing in almost double their initial goal for a total of $15,000, with the largest contribution coming in from Kern Health Systems. Today, the group presented a check to create the Bowers Book Depot Free Library on Robinson Street. 
always had a passion for reading as a kid. I started with Harry Potter when I was really little. Um, but growing up, I realized that you know I was really fortunate to have like access to these sorts of books. I was able, to, you know, my parents uh, were fortunate enough to take me to like the Kern County Library, and I was able to have books in like my local school. And so recognizing that sort of need um, and lack of books, I guess, you know, I wanted to be able to recreate that environment for uh, kids growing up now. You know, many years after me. Anand says he not only hopes people will enjoy the free library and find a passion for literacy, but he wants other teens in our area to get involved in their community and volunteer to fill a need like this. All right, and also happening today, the United Way of Kern County partnering with Assembly Member Rudy Salas and other local groups to give away free books, boxes of food, and resource kits for kids ages 13 and under. It's one of their collective Healthy Minds, Healthy Bodies events. The drive through giveaway happening this afternoon from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at Bear Mountain Elementary School in Arvin. United Way says the giveaway is addressing two of the largest issues here in Kern County, literacy rates and hunger. Hello, this is Tim Callahan with Clinica Sierra Vista, and we're excited to unveil the Community Health Center of the Future, our comprehensive care center. It's located right across the street from Memorial Hospital. We have every service under one roof, from family medicine, OBGYN care, dental services for adults and children, behavioral health, and much more. So find your way to better care at Clinica Sierra Vista this year at our comprehensive care center. Visit our website, clinicasierravista.org, for the latest on this project. We'll see you soon. Artemis Launch Control with an update. Launch Director Charlie Blackwell-Thompson has called a scrub for today. You're hearing it there early this morning. NASA scrubbing the launch of its new moon rocket on a no crew test flight after a cascade of last minute problems, including unexplained engine trouble. The next launch attempt will not take place until Friday at the earliest, they say. The flight, when it does happen, will be a big step forward in America's quest to put astronauts back on the moon for the first time since the end of the Apollo program 50 years ago. NASA hopes to send four astronauts around the moon in 2024 and land humans on the lunar surface as early as 2025. Well, in your 17 business news, Mossman's has done it. One million orders of fish and chips sold since the local coffee shop put the item on its menu 70 years ago. Rick Mossman, the owner of the local institution with the self-described best fish and chips in town, confirmed for 17 News just a few minutes ago that Mossman's did serve up that one millionth order sometime over the weekend. We still don't know the name of the lucky customer or which of the two Mossman's locations served that lucky person, only that Mossman's is now working toward two million, they say, but it won't be happening anytime soon. Now, the Mossman family and crew have been serving this specialty dish since 1952 using the same handwritten recipe that founder Clarence Mossman created all those decades ago. Rick says the winner of the big prize will be revealed Wednesday at 2 p.m. at their Westchester location, but in the meantime, the celebration continues and they say they will continue to take entry forms through the end of the month and they'll be awarding prizes each day at both restaurants. So, as for the main prizes, the one millionth order gets a $1,000 voucher for Princess Cruises. Second place, or that person who ordered right before the one millionth order this weekend, they got a $500 voucher for airfare. Third place gets three days, two nights in Huntington Beach. Fourth place, getting a fish fry for six. All right. And happening today, the Tatchby Heritage League will premiere a new short video that commemorates the 70th anniversary of the 1952 Tatchby earthquake. That quake, which destroyed the small mountain town, was the most powerful in California since the 1906 quake in San Francisco. The premiere will be at the Hitching Post Theater this evening at 6.30. The $10 admission fee includes a special showing of the DVD, followed by remarks from the producer, a geologist, and a local historian. You can also check out 17's Robert Price's specials on that earthquake and the aftershocks that changed Kern County forever on our website, kget.com. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.